first segment. I got some questions and stuff that we're going to go over um, rather than recap. Whenever I have some fresh questions, uh, I like to do that instead of the recaps. And then maybe if we have time in the first segment, we'll go into a recap. Second segment, we'll go over some of the, um, you know, the, um, the players to pick, the players to stay away from. You know, and we do that based on the salary cap leagues that you get the, you know, the, the weekly salary leagues. And in the third segment, we'll go over our picks. Uh, we have the three-time New Jersey Devils defending champ, uh, Big Will Lamont. Uh, went two and two last week, but that's a overall. I think he's eight and four now. So you're gonna want to hear what his four picks are, and he's going heads up with Dick Santino this week. He's taking on the champ. Uh, the all-time champ, uh, Will's, you know, just a simple New Jersey champ, but uh, he's got to go up against the all-time champ, Dick Santino, today. So we're going to try to knock him off and put him back where he belongs in his place. Wow, his man. <laughs> you might be biting off one thing to chew, man. Yeah, I no way, man. You can't, you can't get me motivated. When hey. I get motivated, I make, I get it done. <laughs> hey, he, he might want to be the king, Yeah, man. well. If yeah, he might get to the top of the mile, you got to... Hey, you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Ch- we'll, see what happens. Champ. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, got a couple things I wanted to go over before we get into uh, the questions. I also wanted to thank uh, Frankie from FrankieTheSportsGuy.com. He had me on on Sunday night at 10 p.m. So check out Frankie. He does a weekly show on uh, Blog Talk Radio on the Fantasy Sports Channel. It's FrankieTheSportsGuy.com. That's spelled out F R A N K I E the Sports guy.com check him out uh real good guy doing some good things over there um you know so make sure you pay attention to that and i want to thank him again for having me on and if anyone's listening from over there thank you for uh joining us now uh so a couple things i want to go over that are fresh on my mind this week we do have the hurricanes again with their big win last thursday so it was a big thursday night for me uh you know we did the show we had the Jets beat the, uh, the Patriots, and then we had the Miami Hurricanes beat Virginia Tech. So it was a pretty good Thursday night for me. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, kind of partied all weekend and kind of missed some of the games on Sunday. So maybe Anthony can help us out and give us a recap on some things I might have missed. Uh, but uh, but like I said, before we get into that, we'll do some other things. Uh, i got to slow it down. I'm like speeding 100 miles an hour. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Come in here, I, I get a... I'm in traffic on the way here because I come in from Newark, New Jersey with the New Jersey Devils. Um, you know, I'm coming in and uh, I sit there and you're sitting in the car and you're like just amped up, ready to go, ready to go. And then like it starts to get like, oh, great, I'm going to be late. And then, then you get in the studio you got to turn it right back on. So hopefully I'm not talking too fast. I'll slow it down for you guys out there. All right. Uh, let's a couple things, though, I wanted to mention uh, from last week's NFL se- uh, weekend that just kind of stuck out to me. I'm going to actually mention one thing which is the McNabb not knowing about overtime. That kind of spooks me a little bit because when you start thinking about how many players said they don't know about the o- overtime, start to explain a little bit on how come these teams don't play sometimes with desperation in these final moments or even when they get into overtime, sometimes you're like, well, what are they doing? You know, So maybe that explains it a little bit, that these guys don't realize that in overtime there's a tie game. And there's no you have to you have to try to win the game. If you don't, you're going to end up in a tie. So that was a little baffling to me, and it goes to show you once again how the fans know and seem to care a lot more than the players do. But uh, we'll leave that conversation for another day. Anthony, you look like you want to chime in. Do you want to say something? Well, i well um, getting back to what you were saying about Manap not knowing the rules of the tie. I think it was stuck, stuck out because he's ten years into the league, and mm-hmm. to not know the rules of overtime is more puzzling. But also to hear so many players come out and say that they didn't know there were ties in the NFL. And granted, it does not happen often. It's like the first time in six years. So mm-hmm. it's a rare occurrence. But if anything, it's going to make teams really emphasize the rules of the game a lot more, especially for incoming rookies next season mm-hmm. and so forth. Because you, I mean, and I got a chance to see that Cincinnati Philadelphia game in overtime. And watching the Eagles operate, it did not, did not look like he had a sense of urgency whatsoever. Mm-hmm. The play call, call was very vanilla. It was almost like they were playing to get us a second overtime. The problem is there is no second overtime of, in the regular season. So that's the one thing that's really going to stick out is the fact that teams are now going to really put an emphasis on these rules and regulations. And it is kind of startling when the fans know more about the rules than the players themselves. Yeah, and, and the, thing, the thing to me is about it is this is not just some quarterback. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, was an all-pro, went to a Super Bowl, you know, has been to some championship games. So it's just kind of puzzling to me that he didn't know the rules. And, you know, it's kind of disheartening. And the thing is, it's going to lead to another point I'm going to make, but I'm not going to make it until the third segment when we get into um, – I'm going to tie this into the third segment 
uh, when I talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers San Diego Chargers game before we do our picks. There's going to be something I want to mention. It's going to tie into the whole McNabb not knowing what's going on. Um, another thing I want, and on the piggyback of overtime, I've been I forgot to mention this a couple times, but it's bowl season coming, so now is when it gets kind of to me is when it starts to when I start to think about it. But the college football overtime rules kind of suck. And I'm going to tell you guys all why, and this is the biggest issue I have with it. Now, I like the fact that both teams get a possession, at least. Okay, I like the fact that it goes until someone wins, fine. But I've noticed, and I wonder if someone could do stats on this, but in college football, if you score in your first possession in overtime, then the second team comes back and scores, now they get the ball in the third possession. So the same offense is on the, on, on the field for two straight possessions. And normally, I, I, from what I remember, and I can remember once distinct, I noticed it, when it was the Miami Hurricanes versus the Ohio State Buckeyes in the championship game, it looked like they'd worn down on the second possession. Because you've asked the defense to be out there two straight possessions, and the offense having their way with them. And in that second possession, it always looks like the defense is a little bit more tired. And then when, that, when the opposing team's defense comes out now for the fourth possession, they've rested now for over maybe 15, 20 minutes. So it's... So, hey, Lee, what's going on? The owner of the station coming in? <laughs> so, everything went well? You're doing good? You're looking good, buddy. All right, I got some things to talk to you about after the show. We're going to try to hopefully maybe do some kind of group outing thing. I got some information for you. We'll talk about it. But And that goes to all my listeners. The reason I'm bringing it up is, you know, if any guys are um, hockey fans, Delaware fans, are in the tri-state area and you want to go over to the Prudential Center, we're going to try to organize uh, a group outing for uh, not only people from my show, but from other shows. So we'll see what's happening. Uh, keep everyone that in mind. And remember, you can get me at dicksantino at comcast.net. I forgot to do all this. dicksantino at comcast.net to get me questions and comments or Facebook or myspace.com uh, slash fantasy, uh, fantasy sports guy. Um, what else we got? You got me chasing 74 crowdpicks.com, wagerline.com, which is where I use to get my picks and my spreads. I like wagerline. They got a lot of good context, uh, contests on there. So check out wagerline.com. And then to a lesser extent, uh, crowdpicks.com is more of a revenue sharing website. So check that out. If any of you guys are interested in any of that stuff, send me an email, dicksantino at comcast.net. I can give you the links to my page and everything like that. Uh, you know, we're on a bunch of different sites. So just keep that in mind. If you want to get in touch with me, it's not that hard. Uh, and I appreciate it if you guys are listening, but also checking me out on the podcast. Uh, you know, if you're listening to the podcast and you know you still got a question for me, just shoot me something. And you know, I'm always around. I'm always carrying around my uh, my phone. I basically have internet in my pocket. So you know, anytime you guys need something, even if it's like last minute, I'll try to get to you. Uh, even if it's on a Sunday morning and you know something's going on with a, a lineup issue, you can always send me that stuff. Now, the thing about the college football thing, I just wanted to wrap it up by saying. You know, so it's always like that fourth possession now that other defenses have been resting and they look a little bit more powerful than the defenses that were on two straight possessions. So it's just a rule that I would pay attention to come bowl season. And I would love to find out if anyone has any stats and if there's any kind of way to figure out if that is a factor. Go ahead. Got something? Well, yeah, I was going to say with the college football overtime, the problem with that I, I see more often than not is the fact that you play on and on uh, until someone wins. You like the fact that both teams do give. Uh, possession at least once, but when you're an offensive player and you have played against the same defensive unit for four quarters plus, by that second possession you've picked up everything that the defense has to offer and throw at you. So it's always, so the offense always seems to have an edge in these consecutive overtimes because mm-hmm. the defense are worn out. Mm-hmm. They're not allowed to. They're not really able to substitute players in and out as much. And as an offensive player, you've seen everything they're going to throw at you. So that's the one day I have a problem with overtime. In college football, like I like the NFL over time, where you let the when you get a win, you let the ball, get your defense out there, make a stop, and own it. You know. Yeah. I, I, now, the other thing about the NFL, though, sometimes like I wish the other team had a, a, one shot. Like I, the way I would look at it, the perfect world for an overtime is you know the the team gets the ball first, find they can you know flip for a coin for it, whatever, get the possession. If they score, the other team gets one possession to try to match it, and regular like a kickoff and everything, not like starting at thirty five. But whatever, we're getting into stupid crap. This is a fantasy sports show, so we're gonna move on from there. Um, let's.